Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I've got the Mini Lab 3 in front of me. This is a new mini controller powered by USB. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through the process of plugging this into your computer, turning it on and getting set up. So everything on here feels really good. If you haven't seen my video comparing this to the Mini Lab 2, I'll throw that in the description below. But let's go ahead and plug this into the computer with the included USB cable. It's traditional USB to USB-C. So on the back of the controller itself, when we flip this up, we have USB-C port, we have a control port, we have a traditional five pin MIDI out. So while I've got this here, I have a standard Yamaha FC4A sustain pedal. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the control pedal port here. And then we're gonna plug the USB into the USB-C port. Now it doesn't really go that way, so we're gonna go this way. So if you've got a sustain pedal, you have to have it going out towards that side. And we're gonna plug the other end, the traditional USB, into our computer's USB port. Now, as soon as I do this, you're gonna see the controller light up. We've got some fun colors here on the pads, screen turns on, and we're good to go. Now, you should have gotten this little card with the controller that says, thank you for buying, don't forget to register. And there's a serial number and an unlock code on this card. So we're gonna go over to the computer. The first thing we're gonna do is in a browser, just go to arturia.com, A-R-T-U-R-I-A.com. And over with this little person icon, we're gonna click on that. If you don't have an account, you're gonna to have to create an account by clicking here. And that's gonna take you over where you're gonna choose a password, put your email, and then create your account. I already have an account with Aturia, so instead, I'm gonna log into my account. And then I'm gonna click on this little profile icon again, and I'm gonna to go to My Products. This is gonna take us over to the product page where we're able to register a new product. So click on this Register New Product button. And here it's gonna ask for the serial number and the unlock code that comes with your controller. That's again on this little card here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this and click register. Now this is gonna take me to a page that tells me I've registered my controller successfully. And I can now get access to the free software and downloads that come with this controller. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see the instructions on how to install the Arturia Software Center to manage all of the licenses. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this download button here. It's gonna download that to our computer. We're gonna click open file. We're gonna run through this, accept the agreement, click next. We're not gonna create a desktop icon. It will go into our start menu and that's fine with me. And then we're gonna click on install. This is gonna go ahead and install the software center, which will make it a little bit easier to manage everything that comes with this controller. Click on finish. And if we go to our start menu, and go to our apps. We should see this in our menu here. If we scroll to Arturia, you'll see Arturia Software Center right here. We can open that up and we're going to sign in with our username and password and it's gonna bring up all of the products that we have. So you'll notice down here, Mini Lab 3, we're gonna go ahead and click on activate. It's gonna activate this and then we could click this install all button but let's go over to view product details and we'll see the products that it's going to install if we were to do our install all. In this case, it's the Analog Lab intro, which I'm not going to install in this video, but you could go ahead and install that. That's a pack of sounds that comes included with this controller. So go ahead and install that, play around with it. I'll have a separate video where I'll go through that process, but it should be pretty straightforward in terms of installing that on your computer. Let's go back to our page here and scroll down a little bit more. I just wanna highlight a few things here. So the software center, that's what we installed. If you're on a Mac, you're gonna install this one here. Uh, this should guide you though to the correct one for your computer. The MIDI control center, let's go ahead and install that. I'll just show you that really quickly here. We're gonna download the Windows version and then we're gonna click on this EXE to install that to our computer. Similar process before, except the agreement, next. We're gonna install this just to the default folder here. And this is gonna install the MIDI driver and then the MIDI control center. We're gonna click next. We aren't gonna create a desktop shortcut. Just keeps my desktop a little cleaner there. It's gonna go through the install process here. Now, I like to do this just because it gives me all of the drivers and everything that's needed in order to use this controller. 
And it's better to kind of download these things up front. It's not gonna take a lot of space on your computer and it'll make sure that you have everything in place to use this controller to its fullest. Now it wants to install the driver, so we're gonna hit next. We're gonna run through the install process for that driver and that's successful, so we're gonna click next and then we're gonna click finish. I'm gonna click finish on the MIDI Center setup wizard. We can open up the MIDI Control Center by again going to our apps, scrolling down to the Arturia folder and clicking on the MIDI Control Center. Now obviously we have the controller plugged in, so it's doing a check against our controller when we opened up the MIDI Control Center and it says a firmware update is available for our controller. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install that right now and it says the download successful, entering firmware upgrade mode, we're gonna click OK. And it's gonna upgrade, you'll see that the controller lights are now blinking, it's gonna go through the firmware process. During this time, do not unplug the controller, we're gonna leave everything as is, we're gonna let it run through its firmware upgrade process. You'll notice on the screen, it gives us an indication of the progress, and then the controller again shows uh, some blinky lights, and on the screen, we can see that this process has completed successfully. So we're gonna click OK. And this brings us over to a depiction here on the screen and we can maximize this so we can see it a little bit better. So this is our device, the Minilab 3. We're on firmware 1.0.5. And you'll see here a picture of the back of the controller and the front of the controller. And you'll see that as I move over these controls that they highlight. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go in depth on customizing the controls, but as you can see here, as I click through these, it gives me my options here where I can set the various parameters for the various controls on the controller. So a really good way if you wanna customize and build some custom presets. You can see there's device memories here. We can actually save and import. So I'll be getting into this further in future videos, but this at least shows you where to go to start building custom presets for the Minilab 3. So let's close this. Let's open up Pro Tools and let's look at using this in Pro Tools with a virtual instrument. Now let's play some sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Pro Tools here. So we have our Pro Tools session open. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a little bit of setup in order to start using our controller. Now the first thing we're gonna do is go to the setup menu, MIDI, MIDI input devices, and we're gonna make sure that the Mini Lab 3 is checked off. Mine were by default, but if they're not, go ahead and check those off. You may have to restart Pro Tools in order to get this to work. Now here's something interesting is, I have not been able to get the DAW controls to work, even though on the controller itself, if you hold shift, there's play, stop, record. I have not been able to get those to work with Pro Tools yet. I will keep working on it though, and as soon as I figure it out, I'll throw a video up on how to do that. So what we're gonna do over back in Pro Tools is we're gonna create a new track, and this is going to be a instrument track. I'm gonna say stereo, and we're gonna click create. It's gonna create us a track. We're gonna make this track height medium just so we can see it a little better. Let's go ahead and throw a plugin on here. Now keep in mind, we didn't download the included plugin that comes with the Mini Lab 3. We could have picked that if it was here. But let's go ahead and just choose the Mini Grand 3. That's gonna load up the plugin. We're gonna wait for this little red bar to finish loading. Now this is not one that comes with this controller, so just keep that in mind. Now in Pro Tools, in order to hear anything, you'll notice if I play, it's recognizing it up here in Pro Tools, but it's not playing the sound because we haven't armed the track. So if we arm the track, I like it. Now over here, if we wanna play drums, we've got these pads. These are associated to notes. And if we go over to the MIDI control center, go back to our controller map, we can click on any one of these pads and we can see down here, the note, the MIDI channel, all those types of things. And we could go in here and change that. And there we go. We've got drum pads here. Again, we could customize the notes that they're triggering or even the MIDI channel that these drums are getting sent out on. Pretty cool stuff, and they, they, the pads honestly feel pretty good. Very responsive, again, I'll get into more comparisons with some of the other mini controllers out there, but I feel like the response and the feel of this is solid enough that I would keep this on my studio desk, so I like it. Pretty cool stuff. I hope this video was helpful for you in 
getting to know step-by-step -step how to plug the controller into your computer, register, download the drivers and the software, and then a little quick run through in Pro Tools on how to get this connected. Now you may not be using Pro Tools as your DAW, but hopefully this gets you 80, 90% of the way there in going in. Most DAWs are set up in a similar way in terms of making sure that the MIDI inputs are enabled in your settings and then setting up your virtual instrument track, enabling or arming that track so it can listen to the incoming MIDI messages. So hopefully that got you the majority of the way there and hopefully you're able to take that, figure it out for whatever DAW you use. Again, I haven't figured out the DAW control part of this yet. I'll be digging into that a little bit more, making a separate video on setting up the DAW control for the MIDI Lab 3, so stay tuned for that. Really excited to compare this against the other popular controllers out there, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Let me know if you have any questions around the MIDI Lab 3. Throw those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music.